welcome to i smart champs uh, this is a series of lectures on organic chemistry and it's about the important reactions important reactions named reactions and the transformations which are meant for uh, 12th board examination IIT JE bit set these are the things which are being covered in this lecture series this is a series of lectures and i am sure that you will score centum if you watch this lectures first of all for the organic case later i will give some mock tests and using that mock tests every one of you can score centum in chemistry especially i am talking of the board examinations and you will all clear iit je bit set neat and i'm no doubt about that all the important questions lots of tricks and techniques i will tell you and my strong recommendation watch the video till the end that is first thing i want i want to tell and the second thing i want to tell this use this video as a mock test how to use this so what i recommend is first watch the video completely and after that there will be a question and after that you will have some little bit of gap in that gap you can pause the video and then watch the question after watching the question you just pause the video and start writing the answer later the answer will be shown to you you can cross check the answer to yourself so that way you can use this video as a mock test that's very very important use this video as a mock test then you will score sent up sure shot sure. and in the first beginning part i'll be covering important named reactions in organic chemistry earlier i have released a video on it's about routine functional group transformations i have released one video there are certain important questions i have discussed so that video you can see uh, currently online that is about uh, a 56 minutes video i have done that and later this is the video on organic chemistry reactions so enjoy the video and i strongly recommend these two first watch the video till the end and then use this video as a mock test completely use this video as a mock test then and use the previous videos also mock test this is what i want to tell and all the important reactions in organic chemistry currently currently i am doing organic chemistry later i will cover the all other uh, things in i mean in organic as well as physical whatever it is so those things also i will be covering later i will be giving mathematics and uh, physics also so those question papers also i will be solving and some few important anyway i am uh, currently putting some physics uh, uh, je related content and now let me i am concentrating on the uh, board related content and then i'll release some videos on uh, the je as well as bits at neat so this is what i want to tell yeah thank you very much and let's move on to the questions welcome to i smart champs i wish to tell once again how to use this video as a mock test uh, thing is that very simple watch the video till the end and after that replay the video once again replay the video once again watch the video till the end replay the video once again while watching the video for the first time you write the entire notes entire notes you please write and after that once again when you are replaying this comes like this and you treat sand mayer reaction like this for example sand mayer reaction you treat it as the question pause the video and write the answer whatever you got whatever you understood and after that anyway i will be solving what is sand mayer reaction right now and that you can cross check with your answer what you got so how far this is the i i think this is the easiest way and effortlessly you will be able to learn from this videos i am sure about that yeah let's uh, let's let's start this the first one first reaction so you can treat this uh, as you are the first question so the sand mayer reaction what is what is it all about sand mayer reaction so it's like you have this one hopefully most of you know this is called benzene diazomene chloride in 2 plus cl minus this is what benzene diazomene chloride when it is treated with cu cl hcl or it is treated with cubr hbr 
or in the case it is treated with CuCN, CuCN, KCN, this kind of stuff when it is treated with this one. So what are the things you are going to get? So how to write this reaction? I will tell you the technique. See when you have benzene diazomic chloride, you think this one as simply like this. Uh, a cation made out of the benzene ring. Of course more or less this is forming. Why so it happens is nitrogen will escape out. And again here when this is the positive part it will generate. Actually this is equivalent. This is the equivalent. You write this two are equivalent. And now what is the negative part out of this one? Negative part you know this very well. Chloride will come out as a negative part. So add positive part and negative part hence the answer. Add the positive part and the negative part hence the answer. So what you get is chlorobenzene. Here bromine will come out that is a negative part. There is a negative part and the positive part is from here. That is the benzene ring having positive charge. That is the positive part. Just add the positive and the negative parts. That is the next one. And again, here Cn minus will come out. And where you don't have any doubt. Of course, the negative charge stays on the carbon only because carbon is less electronegative. So negative charge is from the carbon. So simply the answer is this one. Hence the answers. That's it. This is all the reaction is. So hope you understood nitrogen uh, in all these cases i want to tell this nitrogen will leave nitrogen will escape out as a gas so something like you can treat this as an equivalent of this one this will generate this and this is the positive part the counter negative part is cl minus br minus cn minus these are the products it will generate so easy to remember please write the notes and later in the second second view you are going to write it as a mock test. Yeah, nice. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Yeah, the next reaction is Gutterman reaction. So there is a small thing I want to tell. The Sandmeyer reaction and Gutterman reaction, more or less, more or less they will give the what more they they will give the same product, but the reagents are more or less the same. But you, you see only the difference between the Sandmeyer reaction and Gutterman reaction. Cux and Hx is the thing what we take. Or Cucn and Kcn are the things what we take for the Sandmeyer reaction. But whereas for Gutterman reaction, we take Cu metal, copper metal with the HCl and copper metal with HPr. The reaction, the product wise, more or less they are same. But I will tell you, I will tell you what it is. So here, the same benzene diazomine chloride will be taken benzene diazomine chloride will be taken it is treated with cuhcl or cuhbr so as i told this one will be equivalent to this one will be equivalent to a positive charge on the benzene ring. Something like that you can think of. A cation made out of the benzene ring. So this is what you get. And this will generate as usual Cl minus only. And simply Cl will sit here. And simply you write benzene, chlorobenzene, bromobenzene. Simple. And after that what will come out? Nitrogen gas. Nitrogen will escape as a gas. Only thing, what is the addition is, we are taking Cu, we will get Cu, Cl here, and nitrogen gas, we get Cu, Br here. That's all the reaction is. The products are same. Gutterman reaction and Sandmeyer reaction, more or less, both are same. So these are the reagents wise. A very very small difference. Both short as a difference in the number. So that's what I wish to tell. Yeah, let's let's move on to the next question. 
Yeah, let's see the next question. Uh, convert benzene to aniline and convert aniline to 135 tribromobenzene. These are the two questions you can see. You can use it as mock test. So, first one I am solving. You can pause the video and then give it a try. Yeah, convert benzene to aniline. That's the first part. So, let's take benzene and treat it with nitration mixture. HNO3, H2SO4, that is the mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid, which is called nitration mixture. It will generate nitrobenzene. And the nitrobenzene is further treated with tin and HCl, a mixture of tin and HCl, which is a good reducing agent. It will convert nitrobenzene to aniline so this is nitrobenzene and this is aniline so the next part of the question will start from aniline that is the starting point so we take aniline and aniline on Treatment with bromine water, Br2H2O. First, we get the tribromination done. So, the bromine, the NH2 being ortho para directive, and bromine will sit at ortho para positions. First of all, that's what is achieved. So, tribromination is achieved with from this and then what we do is we treat with NaNO2 HCl so which will convert it into diazomium salt so you get N2 plus and Cl minus and bromine 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 this three are there and this salt is again treated with whatever diazomine salt will treat it with water and H3PO2 H3PO2 will treat with this combination to get our required product our required product is 1 3 5 Tribromo benzene. So that is our required product. Hence the question, hence the answer. So hopefully you have understood these are the reagents. So first aniline on treatment with bromine will get tribromination followed by NaNO2 HCl. We will get benzene diazomic chloride that is a tribromo product of benzene diazomic chloride of the tribromo product. And again when you treat with water and H3PO2 we get the required product has the conversion and give it a try yeah nice thank you let's see the next question let's see the next question the next question is ball scheme reaction what is this reaction this is introduction of introduction of fluorine on the benzene ring. That's what is achieved. So that is fluorobenzene is made. Fluorobenzene is the final product. This is what is the final product. So it is achieved from something like Sandmeyer reaction. So what we do what we do is we'll take the diazomium salt as usual so n2 plus cl minus so this is benzene diazomium chloride this is called diazomium salt the diazomium salt is treated with hbf4 it is treated with hbf4 what the hbf4 will does will do is that it will produce h plus and bf4 minus ions this bf4 minus will replace this chloride here so it will form instead of cl minus it will exchange with 
B F four minus. These two will exchange each other over here. So after the exchange, what you get is N two plus and B F four minus is what you get. And after that, we'll just heat this mixture or we'll heat this uh, product. What we get. And after heating the product. what we get is the substitution of fluorine on the benzene ring along with some of the products like bf3 and n2 and that's boron trifluoride and nitrogen that will come out and what we got is the substitution of fluorine on the benzene ring what is the specialty of substituting fluorine is that normally the substitution of chlorine or bromine is achieved by electrophilic aromatic substitutions electrophilic aromatic substitutions electrophile means their formation of cl plus formation of br plus kind of electrophiles the, the cl plus and br plus are the electrophiles which are forming and they are getting substituted on the benzene ring it's normally achieved by those methods but fluorine in order to substitute by electrophilic substitution is impossible because fluorine being highly electronegative in nature f plus will not form so f plus formation is just impossible so the reason this is the method where we can produce fluorobenzene that's why this method is really popular so hence the reaction so let's move on to the next question yeah let's see the next question uh, this is called finkelstein reaction what is this finkelstein reaction finkelstein reaction is about halogen halogen exchange reaction what are the things which are participating in the halogen exchange that is an alkyl halide uh, and potassium iodide what are the halogens that are, that are that are getting exchanged it is exchanging with x and i this is x and i the exchange reaction this happens in the presence of aceto this is the structure of aceto and this exchange will happen in the presence of acetone and this will shift here x will shift to sodium and iodine will shift here this is what happens x will shift to sodium iodine will shift here that is what the finkelstein reaction is all about so the products will be ri plus nax that's all the reaction is yeah let's move on to the next reaction yeah x x is equal to cl and br we, we can think of chlorine and bromine those are the x yo yeah, so that's what the reaction is for for example you can think of something like uh, uh, ch uh, c2h5 uh, br plus nai something like this in the presence of a stone if you have a stone in the presence of a stone the expected product is c2h5i plus nabr and it's very easy to get iodine substituted here the iodine substitutions are done using this reaction that's why this reaction is really popular yeah let's move on to the next question yeah let's see the next question that's schwartz reaction what is schwartz reaction so it's ch3x plus agf this will give fluorine substitution this is a specialty of this reaction so x can be like fluorine or bromine like this you can think of so ch3f is what you can get plus agx this are the products so instead of agf you can think of like hg2f2 and you can have cof2 and you can have 
SBF3. So these are the other reagents which can be used instead of AGF. So this is how one can remember. So one of the important reactions to get the fluorine substitution done on the so uh, fluoroalkanes can be made. So that is the importance of this reaction. Okay, let us move on to the next question. Yeah, let us see the next question. Convert but 2 in to ethanol. What is but 2 in? Let me draw the structure CH3 CH double bond CH CH3. This is but 2 in and ethanol. What is ethanol? That is acetaldehyde. That is nothing but acetaldehyde that is ethanol acetaldehyde is ethanol and this very very simple what we have to do is ozonolysis so when we do ozonolysis what we get is ch3 ch so o3 we can draw a structure like this like a crown so like this all the bonds will be utilized so like this so how it is utilized this bond is broken like this and oxygen is sitting in between this bond is broken like this and again forming something like this this is forming something like this here one oxygen here one here one something like this and now you divide like this in the presence of uh, this happens in the presence of uh, zinc and H2O. The co this is a kind of complex. In the presence of zinc and H2O, this complex will break to form CH3CHO. Like this, you can remember. And CH3CHO. So that is 2 moles of CH3CHO. That is the ethanol, which is the required product. Hence the reaction. Yeah, let's move on to the next question. Yeah, let's see the next question. Convert ethane nitride to ethanol. So, what is, what is ethane nitride? First of all, let's see that. So, what is ethane nitride means? Ethane refers to two carbons should be there. Nitrile refers to cyanide group. So, that's nothing but methyl cyanide. So, that is 1, 2. So, we'll number the carbon which is connect, which uh, cyanide group if it is there hopefully you know the rules so that's one and two so that's ethane nitrile to ethanol what is ethanol that is what we have seen in the earlier thing that is ch3 cho so that is what we need to achieve this is achieved by a reagent called dipol h d i b a l h what is this dibal H? Diisobutyl. Diisobutyl aluminum hydride. So that is what dibal H. So isobutyl refers to this is what the group is. So, they, they said it is diisobutyl, so two isobutyls, so something like this one. So, that is diisobutyl aluminum hydride. This is the main reagent. Along with this, there is one solvent which is dichloromethane or that is CH2Cl2, it is also called DCM, dichloromethane or it is, uh, it is also called methylene chloride, methylene chloride, methylene refers to CH2 group. So whenever you see CH2 group that is methylene chloride, methylene chloride or dichloromethane which is called DCM, di, dichloromethane. 
or DCM. So disobutyl aluminum hydride, dichloromethane, this combination you can take along with this combination we have to keep it at minus 78 degrees centigrade otherwise the reaction will be violent and this di dibal H is a very powerful reducing agent very good reducing agent it can reduce the aldehyde further to alcohol that can happen so the reason we need to keep it at minus 78 degrees centigrade and hence this arrow contains these all these things that that's with uh, dibal H dichloromethane mixture at minus 78 degrees centigrade when you keep it the ethane nitrile is converted to ethanol this is the process this is the reaction Hence the reaction let's move on to the next question yeah let's see the next question the next question is woods reaction uh, what is this woods reaction woods reaction is uh, this is used to produce symmetric alkanes use it to produce symmetric alkanes asymmetric alkanes if we try if we try to get asymmetric alkanes by this method we end up with a mixture we end up with mixtures mixtures of alkane alkanes we end up with the mixtures of alkanes why it is so why it is a symmetric uh, uh, we can get symmetric alkanes. Symmet oh, what is a symmetric alkane? Symmetric alkanes like plus two alkanes having even number of carbons. Even number of carbons. So the why it is so it is pro for processes. Uh, this process follows free radicals. So here free radicals are produced. Has the reason why we don't have much of control over this reaction. So let's let's see how the reaction is. CH3Br, two moles of CH3Br, and two moles of sodium in the presence of dry ether. Dry ether. What is ether? This is the ether. CH3 O CH3, or oh, we add. Uh, we can make it like this dimethyl ether. Uh, normally, the diethyl ether is taken into consideration. Diethyl ether. So, diethyl ether that is dry ether. There should not be any water because sodium reacts with water like anything. That's the reason. Dry ether. That's you have to be really specific about that. So, it produces this one that is ethane. So, what I started with is methyl bromide. And I got just double the number of carbons over here. That is what is achieved through this reaction. And the rest of the products is like 2NaBr. So there is a trick to remember this reaction. I will present you the trick. How to do this reaction with the trick. So I will solve some two reactions for you. So this is how the symmetric alkanes are being produced you can see if you if you watch the trick it's very easy to remember so how to do this so let us see ch3br plus 2na right like this and again br ch3 right like this and here on the arrow mark you write dry ether so what we do is Put a bracket like this you have to write like this and then join these two ends so that's the hack what i'm doing this is a trick trick to solve what's reaction so let us see another example like c2h5br so two moles of c2h5br it should give us butane 
So let's see the C two H by B R plus two N A plus B R C two H five. Let's take this. Put the bracket like this. Two N A will take two bromines. Two N A will take two bromines. Something like this. So treat it sodium. That is sodium is already there. Dry ether. This is what we write on the arrow. And now you get C two H five single bond. C two H five. That's butane. So I started with ethane. I got double the number of carbons. That's butane for us. This is methyl bromide. This is ethyl bromide. Ethyl bromide I started with. I got butane. And if I take uh, methyl bromide, I will get ethane. So double the number of carbons. I started with two two carbons. I got four carbons. I got with, I started with one one carbon. I got two carbons. That's how one can remember this as a trick. Yeah, let's move on to the next question. Similar to Wood's reaction, uh, let's say this question. Similar to Wood's reaction, there is something called Wood's Pitnik reaction. What is this Wood's Pitnik reaction? So this is like production of of alkyl benzenes. Production of alkyl benzene. This is the crux here. So how it is done? This is like a, the crossed Wood's re, Wood's reaction, what we have seen earlier. So in this one, I have bromine, and we treat with sodium. Of course, we have two sodium, and I have something like Rx. I'll write X R. So what happens here is similar to that. We have on the arrow dry ether. We have on the arrow dry ether is there. So all these things will go minus two N A X or N A B R, whatever the way you like. So we'll take B R over here, and we get N A B R. Okay. So X is B R. That's what I wish to tell. Okay. So when you Take this. The ultimate substitution is this R and the benzene. This one, this one, with this one, you got to join. That's it. So that's a reaction. That's Wood's Pitnik reaction. So that's what the same kind of stuff like what we did for the Wood's reaction. Let's move on to the next question. Let's see the next reaction. Next reaction is similar to that of Wood's reaction, Wood's Fittig reaction. This is called Fittig reaction. The Fittig reaction is used for the production of production of biphenyl. It's like join of two benzene rings. That's what is achieved. So what is done here is that so you have this. Benzene ring, and that's bromine for you, and sodium, dry ether. So when you treat with this, so what we get is one benzene ring connected to another benzene ring. That's what we get. This is called biphenyl. This is called biphenyl, and that's what the reaction is all about. So, how to do this? The similar way we can do. So, this is our benzene, bromobenzene, sodium, two moles, plus bromine, plus benzene. So, this will go off, and again, hence the product, biphenyl. So this is the reaction called Pitnik reaction. So similar to that of Wood's reaction, we have two more reactions. One is Wood's Pitnik reaction, another one is Pitnik reaction. And Pitnik reaction is used for the production of biphenyl. 
and similar to that we will take bromobenzene sodium dry ether same kind of stuff stuff is the same so the technique is also same draw the bracket for these things and then finish off yeah that's what it is let's move on to the next question yeah let's see the next question the next question is friedel crafts alkylation reaction this is what is the friedel crafts alkylation reaction is the production of alkyl benzenes that is the motto of this reaction so further extension of these reactions i will discuss in uh, the next uh, questions so what is this particularly this is a kind of electrophilic aromatic substitution so this is a kind of electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction what is this one the electrophile over here is like ch3 plus so directly do we get ch3 plus all these things i am going to discuss this is a reaction mechanism i am going to discuss for this reaction basically let's see what is this reaction all about so we have this is the benzene ring with when it is treated with something like ch3cl in the presence of alcl3 aluminum chloride that should be anhydrous why anhydrous alcl3 is it will break so we know that boron aluminum gallium indium tallium those are lewis acids so the water is there this reagent will crack so that's the reason it should be anhydrous so what it does is it will introduce ch3 group on the benzene ring it will introduce ch3 group on the benzene ring so and then followed by of course hcl so we know that the hydrogen will be here that is replaced by ch3 group so that's what happens in the friedel crafts alkylation reaction this is this ch3 is the alkyl group so how exactly the electrophile is formed and all these things i am going to discuss now so what is this reaction basically so the first part is let's concentrate on this part like uh, the ch3 cl will start reacting with alcl3 to form ch3 plus al cl4 minus this kind of a complex is formed a complex of this sort is formed and that generates our electrophile now what happens here is that so uh, let me rub this off so the electrophile ch3 plus is generated so the benzene ring we have the benzene ring so let's draw something like this so we'll show a proton so what happens here is so ch3 plus is approaching this one so from the benzene ring because it's electron rich the pi bonds are labile and the pi bond can be broken very easily the positive charge will attract the pi bond towards that and hence the ch3 can sit at any position i mean at any carbon so when it sits at any carbon that means due to sharing of this bonded electrons i would say it is sitting at this position this position is going to get the positive charge because it is deprived of the electrons so that position is going to get the positive charge so when you have that this double bond can shift like this and here the next positive charge can generate so you can see that happening all over the molecule and here this thing is undisturbed right now in the current situation so you can see that this charge is shifted over here and this is the position which is deprived of the electrons because of the shift of this bond this this position is unaffected you can see that and hence this this where what you get the positive charge 
and after that you have this bond is also there this electrons will shift over here this position is deprived of the electrons so and hence one can write these are the resonance structures and you get this so after this you have the positive charge over here and here the bond is shifted this bond is shifted here and this one something like this now what okay now i'll tell you one thing what is the driving force see this i said is substitution reaction so substitution means this hydrogen has to be knocked out and ch3 has to stay in all the bonds have to be satisfied so what is the driving force here ch3 plus remember ch3 plus is coming from the complex alcl4 minus so alcl4 minus is already there the negative counterpart the negative counterpart will pick this proton and this charge will be shifted here this is what happens so this forms h plus al cl4 minus this is the complex it forms this is actually written as hcl plus alcl3 so actually this is the complex what it forms and now this electrons are shifted here which will compensate the charge over there so this is what happens for this entire reaction so hence the reaction hence we get methyl benzene this is the uh, sequence of mechanism if you can if you can understand this please give a practice so that's what i recommend give a practice so let's move on to the next question yeah let's see the next question that is four nitro toluene to two bromo benzoic acid so this is one of the tough conversions to achieve so what is four nitro toluene that is this is ch3 here and go to here that is para nitro toluene so that is para nitro toluene and i need to convert it into two bromo benzoic acid so let's treat this with br2 and febr3 so that forms a kind of complex br plus and fe br4 minus this is the complex it forms and this complex will generate br plus which is an electrophile and ch3 being an ortho para directive the para position is already blocked by no2 group so para position is impossible and the substitution at para position is impossible that's what i mean to say and the these are the two ortho positions which is vacant and so here it can sit the br plus can come and sit that is electrophilic substitution which can happen on the benzene ring and now in addition to that the added advantage is that no2 being meta directive these positions are meta to that and further bromination uh, will be restricted because no2 being uh, it will be ring deactivator so the further bromination will not happen that easily under these conditions so this is what uh, that's why we don't get the second bromination done so if at all the question is asked we can answer something like that so why further bromination further bromination cannot happen in this condition so this is how one can answer because being no to being uh, the ring withdrawing type so the electron withdrawing type so the reason the further bromination is not possible so this is what i get so bromine is being substituted one bromine is being substituted in a, in one of the or the positions and after this what what i have to do is that you see this two bromo benzoic acid it closes this and if i oxidize the ch3 i'll get two bromo benzoic acid 
So somehow my idea is to remove this NO2 group. So for that, what I do is that I first treat with the tin and HCl, where I will convert this NO2 to NH2. So tin HCl is a good reducing agent. So this is Me, this is Br, and this is converted into NH2. And after that, we have uh, followed by diacetization reaction NaNO2HCl 0 degrees centigrade to 5 degrees centigrade. And after that, what we get is that we get this one, the diazomium salt. We get diazomium salt, CH3Br, this is the diazomium salt what we get. And after that, this is followed by water and H3PO2, which removes this N2Cl as nitrogen gas and Cl minus is taken up by solvent and hence what you get is this one so this is the one and this one is further treated with KMnO4 and H3O plus there is the brutal oxidation that's why I convert CH3 to COH and hence that's the reaction that's how it is completed so that's the required product to bromo benzoic acid benzoic acid this is one of the tough conversions please give as much practice as you can yeah let's move on to the next video yeah let's see the next question here write the major and minor products of the given reactions. This is what the question is. So the chlorobenzene with methyl chloride anhydrous AlCl3, this is like a friedel crafts reaction. Chlorine is a ring activator because it can donate the electrons to the ring. And hence the reason it can activate the ring. Whatever uh, the things which can activate the ring, those are ortho and para directive. So we can write the ortho and para products so chlorine here the ortho product and we have chlorine here and this is the para product so this is one chloro two methyl benzene the first part is that is one chloro two methyl benzene that's the first part which is minor why it is minor is because of this repulsions this product uh, will not form that easily and because these are distant to each other, this product will form very easily. So this is one chloro four methyl benzene. This is one chloro four methyl benzene. That's the product. So we take the this is the next reaction, which is anhydrous AlCl three with the carbon disulfide. So here the OME, this is also a ring activator, hence the reason it's ortho para directive. This ortho para directive. So what do you get is that we get OME and the CH3 can sit here. That is para product. This is the major and CH3 in the ortho position which is the minor product minor because of the repulsions are strong if they are close the repulsions are weak if they are away from each other so there is a reason those are the 
major and minor products of this reactions so hence let's go to the next question yeah this the this the one is called i forgot to tell the names this is four methoxy toluene and this is this one is two methoxy toluene so these are the products yeah let's move on to the next question yeah this is the last question for this video convert aniline to 246 tribromophenol so very easy important conversion so what we do is the similar kind of diazotization reaction so they may ask you right from nitrobenzene. So I start right from nitrobenzene. So pin HCl. So that's how we get aniline. They may ask you right from nitrobenzene. So I'm doing from nitrobenzene. So you got aniline. Aniline on treatment with NaNO2 HCl. 0 degree centigrade to 5 degree centigrade. You will get the diazotization reaction so this is uh, diazoming chloride benzene diazoming chloride and benzene diazoming chloride when we treat this with uh, an acid we'll get phenol we'll get phenol phenol on treatment with bromine h2o that is called bromine water we will get 246 tribromophenol and that's bromine 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 this is the final product 246 tribromo phenol yeah that's the last question for this video and I'll make another video on NAMED reactions. Uh, I've covered some of the NAMED reactions and uh, some important transformations in this video. Hope you liked it. And use this video as a mock test. And again, now you have seen the video once. And now go back to the beginning and uh, try to do a mock test. That's what I suggest. And uh, the next video will be, uh, the part two of the video will be uh, coming soon. So this is what I want to tell. Yeah, all the best and uh, uh, practice well. That's what I want to tell. Yeah, and if you like the video, please subscribe.